reading is from Acts 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? And they answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Our second reading is Mark 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me, and I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This ends the reading of our Holy Scripture.
Baptism matters. Baptism makes a change in our lives. That's why we do it. Yes, we partially do it because of tradition and because of centuries of practice. But in the end, that tradition, that centuries of practice comes because we believe baptism does something. Baptism makes a difference in how we live our lives, a difference in who we are. Baptism matters. The baptism we practice in the church is a combination of baptism of John, that baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, that baptism which says, I need to change direction, because that's what repentance is. Repent, to repent is to change direction, to go another way. That baptism of water, which tradition, one of the traditional languages of baptism is that the water of baptism washes away our sins. Admittedly, that image doesn't work very well when you're baptizing a one-month-old. One of the debates about baptism in the church has long been infant baptism or believer's baptism, what we sometimes call adult baptism. Because some of the language we make around baptism makes more sense for somebody who's coming to it of their own accord than it does for an infant. And on the other side, we have that baptism of the Spirit. John was wildly popular. All of the Gospels make it quite clear. John was wildly popular. Probably he was a charismatic speaker. Because it's interesting to see he was wildly popular when one of his penchants was to tell those who came they were snakes, a pit of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? That, and combined with his unusual diet and wardrobe, Bev Brazier knows a song which she has sung during her uh, evening story times. All I know is it's got the phrase, big eight bugs for lunch, because Ashley sings that at the top of her lungs whenever she hears it. But John was wildly popular. But even John knew it wasn't about John. One is coming after me, he says, who is far greater than I am. One is coming after me who will, I'm not even fit to untie the thong of his sandal. I baptize you with water, he will baptize you with the Spirit. Some years later, probably at least a decade later, Paul is in Ephesus. And by this point, there are various Christian teachers roaming around the eastern end of the Mediterranean. Apollos is another one. And it appears that Apollos has already been in Ephesus. He's now moved on to Corinth. And we'll hear more about him in Corinth. But Paul has come, and the people say, well, we were baptized. And Paul says, with what were you baptized? With the baptism of John, they said. That baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And Paul says, you're missing part of it. And he goes on to talk about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Early in the Christian story, just after Easter, 50 days after Easter, so Luke tells us, the risen Christ the God made known in the risen Christ bestows upon the Christian community the gift of the Spirit. And Paul says you need to this part as well. You need to know the whole story. And so they are baptized not just with the baptism of John, but they are baptized with the baptism of Christ, the baptism of water and the Spirit. Because it's the Spirit that does the transforming work. 
What baptism does is it opens us up to be transformed. Water, in and of itself, is a good solvent. It's good for cleaning. But it doesn't transform. The Spirit transforms. That baptism by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit filling our lives, changing how we see, changing who we are, changing how we think, that's the full baptism of faith. It's not a once and for all thing. The Spirit working in our lives is an ingrowing, a sanctifying. A process. And it's the pro that's the part of the process I fear we sometimes forget when we celebrate baptism. When we celebrate baptism, sometimes we romanticize the gift of new life. We slide over the gift of transformation. And yet, as I said with children's time, after I baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one of the few times in our liturgy where there are words I am required to say, I then hold the child. And I invite the family to put their hands on the child's head or shoulder. If it's an infant, the head's only so big. So shoulder, arm. Well, I give that second blessing. And I name the child again. And I ask that the power of the Spirit would work within to guide and inspire them all the days of their life. The power of the Spirit would work in to guide and inspire and transform them all the days of their life. That's what baptism means. It's that opening ourselves to transformation. We need that gift of transformation these days. We need it for ourselves. We need it for the world. Because that gift of the Spirit transforming us changes, as I said, how we think, what we believe, how we act, who we are. When we let the Spirit transform us, it changes how we do eco-theology, how we talk about our relationship with the created world. It changes how we talk about issues like racism and white supremacy. It changes how we talk about economic justice, how we do our politics. On Wednesday, as I'm sure you couldn't help but hear, because it was everywhere, there was an attempted coup. Or, as some might say, a protest that got out of camp. But if it happened anywhere else except Washington, D.C., we would say it was an attempted coup. In that crowd, in that crowd of people, there were people wearing openly racist slogans. Six million wasn't enough referring to the Holocaust. There were also people wear, carrying Jesus flags. I'm not exactly sure what a Jesus flag is. I've, in my history, I've never seen a Jesus flag other than the cross. I'm pretty sure that wasn't what they were carrying. Because there's that group of Christians who believe that Donald Trump is somehow God's chosen one. That Specific political positions, economic positions, are somehow ordained by God as the way the world is supposed to work. That's not what I believe. And when I see people using the gospel of Christ to proclaim and stand beside white supremacists, to proclaim that it's ordained some people should live in utter poverty because they just can't pull their own boots up. For me, that says they're missing the second part of baptism. Many people, when talking about baptism, oh, one of my candles, another candle went out. For many people, when talking about baptism, are really good to talk about that baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
They're too easy to talk about baptism as the washing away of who we were and the, our sins so we can live as redeemed, forgiven people, justified in God's eyes. It is part of our baptism. It's harder. It's always harder to talk about that baptism of the Spirit that transforms and changes and alters our very core. Because in order for that to happen, we need to open ourselves and let God work through us, in us. We are baptized by water and the Spirit. We are forgiven, justified, to use traditional theological language. We are also called to be transformed to be sanctified. John Wesley, founder of Methodism, spoke about a doctrine of moving toward Christian perfection. That's that transforming work God is doing in us. Wesley also said, if you ever said, I'm there, I'm Christian, I've reached Christian perfection, that was a pretty sure sign that you needed to go back to step one. In baptism matters. Baptism changes who we are ontologically. It changes our very being if we let it. We are God's beloved children. We are called God's beloved children in our baptism. We are claimed as God's own. We are commissioned to go out and share God's love by water and the Spirit. Cleansed, forgiven, sanctified, transformed. Amen.